Here are the questions on magnetism. The worked out problems in the class. Now try to please read every question. Try to understand the question before even you look at how it's solved. Here it's a 1.5 meter long conductor carrying 4.5 amperes of current. It's horizontal and the earth's magnetic field is making an angle of 38 degrees to the conductor. We got to find the force. So you got need to think about, oh, this is a current carrying conductor kept in a magnetic field. And so the formula for force is P I L sine theta. All quantities are given here. The magnetic field B of the earth, the length, the angle, and the current all are given. So write down the equation, substitute the numbers, take care to see that all of them are in the proper units, which they are in this case, and calculate the answer as 2.6 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons, because it's a force. Second question, it's a 5 mega electron volt which says it's kinetic energy, proton entering a 0 0.20 tesla field and it's entering perpendicular to the field. What's the radius of the path? Now to find the radius of the path, we know that the centripetal force mv squared by r becomes equal to qvb from which you get the radius. But we need to find the velocity of the particle. What's given is its kinetic energy. So that's the plan from the kinetic energy. We need to get the velocity first. We know that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Let's call it k. And therefore rearranging velocity would be square root 2k by the mass. But the kinetic energy itself is not given in joules. We got to convert it into joules. Mega 10 to the 6 times the charge of the electron. That's how you convert electron volt into joules. That is the mass of the proton. So now we have the velocity and we can find the radius using this equation. Mass given we just found the velocity and uh, I'm going to write that number down in a second. What we have for velocity is actually 3.1 times 10 to the 7 meter per second. So when you substitute it there, you get the radius as 1.8 meter. Third question. It's a doubly charged helium atom. Doubly charged here means it's lost both electrons or maybe gained two electrons. So it has a charge equal to twice that of the electron. Its mass is given. It's accelerated by a voltage of 2100 volt. What is the radius of curvature? And the magnetic field is given. Once again, like the previous question, from the voltage, we need to figure out its velocity. So Q times the voltage is 1 half mv squared. Find the velocity. Rearrange to make the radius the subject here. And substitute the whole quantity we get for velocity. And then finally put all the numbers in. That's what the equation simplifies to. If you watch carefully, there is a square root m here. There is an m outside. That's how you get this mass. And uh, the same case with charge. There are two here, one under the square root, the other outside. And that's how we get this. So put in the numbers. 
Remember that the charge is twice that of the electron, that's why you have the two there. And on calculation you get 3.1 times 10 to the negative 2 meter. No, no, I made a mistake on that, I'm sorry, it's 1.9 times 10 to the negative 2 meter. 1.9 times 10 to the negative 2 meter. That's the radius. In the B part, you're asked to find the time period. That is the time taken to make one complete rotation, which would be equal to distance by velocity. Time is distance by velocity. Here the distance is the circumference. So it's 2 pi r by velocity, which gives you 3.74 times 10 to the negative 7 seconds. Question number 4. The force on a conductor uh, carrying 8.75 amperes is a maximum. So, so that's the maximum force and it's 1.28 newtons. When placed between the pole faces of the magnet and the diameter of the pole faces are given, you've got to find the strength of the field. Remember that the length of the conductor is immaterial here. It's only the length that is between the pole faces. That's important. So it's actually the diameter of the pole faces that becomes the effective length. F max is ILB because force is ILB sine theta. When theta is 90, maximum is ILB. Rearrange that, make B the subject. All quantities given. Of course, 55.5 in centimeter has been converted into meter here, and you get the answer. Number five, what's the velocity of a beam of electrons that go undeflected when passing through perpendicular electric and magnetic fields? Both the electric and magnetic fields are given, and uh, to find the velocity, remember this is the velocity selector, to find that velocity it's just to take the ratio of the electric field intensity to the magnetic field intensity. I'm going to show you how we get that equation in a minute. And you get 2.5 times 10 to the 6 meter per second. And what's the radius of the electron orbit if the electric field is turned off? So now there's only the magnetic field. Therefore, as we did before, the radius is given by mv by qb. That is the third time we're doing this similar kind of problem. Our mass times the velocity that we just got now, divided by the charge of the electron, multiplied by the magnetic field intensity gives 4.0 times 10 to the negative 3 meter and I'm here see that's how we get it the electric force is equal to the magnetic force the Q's get cancelled and that's how you get that formula number six the 2 meter long wire carries a current of 8.2 ampere and is kept in a uniform magnetic field. When the conductor lies along the positive x-axis, the magnetic force is negative 2.5 J. But when it lies on the positive y-axis, the force is 2.5 I minus 5 K. Now, there are two particular cases here, so you've got to make two, K, uh, two conditions, two mathematical equations. And then look at them. B can be, the, the magnetic field can be represented as BXI plus BYJ plus BZK. And taking the first case, because it's along the positive x axis, the length is going to be 2I because it's along the positive x axis. And the force is I L cross B, so 8.2 is the current taken out. L is L I because it's along the positive x axis. Put the I J K. Notice that there is 
On the right, there is two because it's along the positive x-axis. Px, by, and bz. And you know how to take this? Okay, uh, so you get negative 16.4 bzj plus 16.4 byk. Assuming that you know how to take that cross product. Now, considering this, uh, looking at the coefficients, you know that by is 0. And 16.4 uh, bz. That's putting the coefficients of j equal to each other. Look at the coefficients of j. The coefficient of j here is 16.4, negative 16.4 bz. And on the other side, the coefficient of j is negative 2.5. Put them equal to one another and calculate bz as 0 0.152 tesla. In the second case, the conductor lies along the positive y-axis. So it's Lj. So it'll be 2j now. And once again, take the cross product. Il cross B. Now this time it's 8.2. That's the current again, Ijk. It's 0, 2, 0 because it's along the positive y-axis. It's Bx 0, 0.152 because from the last case we got by as 0 and we got bz as 0.152. Take the cross product again. i is 2 times 0.152. Okay, so you get this. Uh, the coefficients of i are of course equal. Now put the coefficients of k equal to each other. Negative 16.4 bx and uh, minus 5. Put them equal to each other, calculate Bx, 5 by 16.4, which gives 0 0.305 Tesla. So now we got the X component and the Z component, put them together and you get the magnetic field as 0.3i plus 0.15k. Very important question to understand because it involves the formula. It involves cross product and uh, total understanding of this um, method that we use to work out this problem is crucial. Seventh one, the proton moves through a region of space where there's a magnetic field, it's given, the electric field is given, and the velocity is given. You've got to find the components of the total force. So here you have both an electric field and a magnetic field and we know that the total force is given by this, the vector sum of the two which is well seems to be writing backwards anyway QE plus QV cross B first one is the electric force the second is a magnetic charge is that of the electron E is given as 3i minus 4.2j times 10 to the 3. And then on the right side, you got to take the cross product again. Now E is taken out common for both terms. So assuming that you know how to take the cross product, Now, the first term, uh, you just keep it as it is, and second term, you take the cross product. Now, distribute it because we're going to try to collect the i's, j's, and k's together. Which is what I've done now. Multiply each term with uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And of course on the outside you have 10 to the 3. So it will be multiplying with 10 to the negative 16 actually. Uh, 
then take out common factor you know 10 to the negative 15 can be taken out common so that is the total force that's how we take the cross product if you didn't know and that brings us to the eighth question circular coil 18 centimeter in diameter containing 12 loops flat on the ground the earth's magnetic field at this location has a magnitude given but it points at an angle of 66 degrees below a line pointing due north it's a clockwise current 7.10 ampere passing through the coil find the torque which edge of the coil rises up the important thing here to remember is that the angle is always taken not with the face of the coil but with the perpendicular drawn to the face of the coil so in this case the angle is not going to be 66 because that's the angle with the face it's going to be 90 minus 66 um, torque is given by NIAB sine theta again remember theta is taken like I explained before 12 loops current is given the area is of course pi r squared and uh, B times sine of 24 degrees there it is you calculate that you get 4.85 times 10 to the negative 5 meter Newton now to get to the equilibrium position the north end of the coil rises up because the angle tries to be zero it's it's at 24 degrees so it tries to rise up so that the angle is zero and uh, tr tries to make it such a way that the perpendicular drawn to the face will be parallel to the earth I mean to the earth's magnetic field somebody asked me for a diagram so I drew it here although it doesn't uh, it's not a three-dimensional diagram but it gives you an idea of uh, the angle being 24 degrees that the earth's magnetic field makes with the dotted arrows which is the perpendicular drawn to the face of the coin in the ninth question there is a single square loop placed with its face parallel to the magnetic field and uh, the current flowing is given the torque is given you got to find the magnetic field strength torque on a coil again NIAB sine theta no force acts on the width because the angle is zero maximum force acts on the length of the coil because it's at 90 degrees and tau max is NAAB because sine 90 is 1 so rearrange make be the subject but the given quantities the torque is given the number of turns is 1 because it's a single loop and you have the current and the area is uh, pi r squared no here I'm sorry it's a square so it's just a squared which is what I'm doing now 0 0.0484 so that's the area substituted there and you get the strength of the magnetic field 1.06 Tesla that brings us to the end and if you have some comments please go ahead and post it Thank you.